key to the kingdom. If you understand it and apply it properly, it's a very important key to the kingdom. I would venture to say that most of the problems every one of us experiences in our life is due to failure to submit in a biblical manner. Now a lot of people might question whether they, could, can, whether they can submit or not. Or they say they can't for this reason or that reason. But the fact is, almost every one of you submits every day in some way or another. If you have a job, you're in submission to somebody. If you're a child, you're in submission to somebody. If you go to school, you're in submission to somebody. The only thing is, there's a lot of people that choose not to be in submission to God. It's a choice they make. I'm almost an expert on not submitting. I lived my life for a long time refusing to submit not only to God, but to earthly authority. I did submit when I was in the service. <laughs> you don't have a lot of choice. We've got a man here. If you need to understand what the submission to authority is, talk to Mike. He's got almost 30 years in the armed services. He understands submission to authority. The, that's one thing in the military they don't tolerate very well if you're not submitted to authority. They kind of demand it. God desires it. But you know, God's given us a choice. He doesn't demand it from us. But he does desire it. And he desires it for our own good. That's right. Amen. Because when we submit in a biblical manner, it opens the gate for God's blessings to flow into our lives. Most of us, when we think about submission, we think about somebody being our boss, somebody being on top of us, somebody being in control of us. Yeah. And that is one aspect of it. That's an earthly picture of submission. Um, in uh, Matthew, most of you probably heard this story about when a centurion comes to Jesus. And it's in Matthew 8, 5, 5 through 9. It says, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies paralyzed at home and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he does, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. This is a picture of earthly authority. It's power. It's commanding. That's the earthly picture. But the centurion also shows us a picture of biblical submission. He obediently came to Jesus. He knew where the healing was. He came to Jesus in obedience, and he came with humility. He said, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is how unworthy he saw himself in light of the great power that Jesus had. He saw himself as not being worthy of what he was asking for, and none of us are. But the beauty is that Jesus came and he restored that relationship, and we are now worthy. We are now worthy. Does everyone love Jesus? Does everyone want to be like Jesus? You're not going to like this message then. Because if we're going to be like Jesus, we have to follow his example. And submission to Christ is central in Christianity. Jesus said, anyone who doesn't carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. If you want to be his disciple, you're going to have to pick up your cross and carry it. Everyone in Jesus' day understood what it meant to carry a cross because that was how Rome public punished their capital prisoners. They hung them on a cross. And when the Romans led a prisoner to his execution site, he literally drug his cross behind him. Now this was done for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it showed his submission to the authority of Rome. 
It may not have been willing submission, but it still was submission to the power of Rome. He really didn't have a choice because he was going to die one way or the other anyway. It also warned the observers that they had better submit to that power also. That they did not have a choice. Rome said, our power is supreme. Do not stand against it. Jesus spoke this to get his followers to think through the commitment they were making. Are you willing to pick up a cross and carry it literally to the point of sacrificing your life to follow me? Following Christ means total submission, perhaps even to the point of death. And you know, we don't see a lot of that in this country, but if you talk to people who have been overseas, there's a very real possibility overseas that you could get killed for your faith. We've not seen that in this country. And I'll throw a yet on the end of that sentence. Because I believe we will before it's all said and done. And you're going to have to choose eventually whether you're going to submit to Jesus or the world. And he gives you that choice. You can choose who you submit to. But weigh the cost. Weigh the cost of who you choose to submit to. Now, God designed the whole concept. There's, there's, well, let's go back a little bit. There's a lot of misunderstanding about the concept of submission. Because we have submission in the earthly sense, and we have submission in the heavenly sense, in the biblical sense. And we're here to talk about biblical submission. And that is different than what has been presented to the world. The world, when they hear the word submission, the first thing that comes to mind is a wife submitting to a husband. And that the husband can do anything he wants and the wife can't do anything about it. That's not biblical submission. But that's what comes to most people's mind. And that's what makes submission an untasteful subject for a lot of people. There are a lot of people who have been hurt by abuse of this concept of submission to authority. You can look at any cult and you're going to see abuse of submission to authority. You can look at a lot of broken marriages and find abuse of this concept. But we're going to talk about what the Bible says about it. So try and put aside what you may think about any, any, any preconceived notions or, or conceptions you may have about submission. And let's see what the Bible has to say about it. Submission is a key to harmony in our relationships with each other. And you can pick any relationship you want, whether it be with your pastor, with the civil authorities, with your husband, with your wife, with your kids, with your boss. It doesn't matter. Submission to authority is a key to harmony in relationships. In 1 Corinthians 11, Paul says, Now I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Submission is a key element in the smooth functioning of relationships. And you can pick any organization you want. We'll pick on the military again tonight. I was in the military, so I understand we, a lot of you people are associated with the military in one way or another. So you, you understand that, that model. And we want to talk in, in, in terms you can understand. Now the military is a little different because they don't have the concept of everybody being equal. But in any organization, somebody has to be in charge. Somebody has to be in charge. And from that person, authority flows down. The people underneath submit to the authority above. That's an earthly model. Now God's model is a little bit different because the Bible tells us we're all equal in Christ. We're all equal, but we willingly choose to submit ourselves to one another so that things can function well. Even though I'm equal with Pastor Rick, I'm submitted to his authority because I choose to because he is the head of my church 
he has a lot of wisdom i respect him